everyone, I am Annika and welcome to my channel where I share lots of beginner friendly DIY and woodworking projects. Today I'm going to be building a bookshelf because the amount of books my kids read and have, we are always running out of space to store them. So I'm building this bookshelf which is pretty straightforward, a pretty simple design but I do want to give it a little bit of character, so I'm going to be using something that is not very commonly used in woodworking. I'm not quite sure how that's going to turn out, but we'll find out. So let's get building. The frame of the bookshelf is made with 2x2 two two boards. As always, I have the full cut list and detailed step-by-step -step instructions linked in the description below. The shelves are made from 3 quarter inch birch plywood, so I set up the sheet of plywood, set up my rib cut and circular saw and cut it down. You only need about a half sheet of plywood for this entire build and you could probably even find enough cutoffs in your workshop. I took the strip of plywood to my miter saw to cut it down to the exact lengths I needed. Now the top and the shelves are different widths, so I had actually originally ripped the plywood to the larger width with the circular saw. So I took it over to my table saw and ripped everything down to the exact sizes each of them needed to be. Now time for the pocket holes. I am using my Craig 720 Pro to make the pocket holes with the drill bit collar set to one and a half inches. The plans show you exactly where all of these pocket holes are made. While I'm making these pocket holes, let me tell you about the pocket hole course, Pocket Hole Ninja, which I have recently launched. It is a beginner friendly step-by-step -step course to teach you everything you need to know about pocket holes, about where do you use them, how to set them up, how to make sure that your joints are strong, and so much more. I cover four models of Craig jig and really the concepts work for any pocket hole jig. So if you have been frustrated or confused by pocket holes, be sure to check that out. I will add a link to that in the description below. Time to put it together. I measured and spaced out the boards to set them up. To attach, I'm using wood glue and pocket hole screws, and these are two and a half inch pocket hole screws. To make sure that I get the right reproducible spacing, I just cut up a scrap board to the exact spacing I needed. Then I just clamped and added the pocket hole screws. I attach the boards such that the pocket holes would be facing downwards and will be completely out of sight so I don't have to worry about filling them up later. Now for the book supports which are the 1x2 boards. Once again I'm using a spacer block to make sure that I have even spacing everywhere. In this case I'm using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws and the pocket hole screws are actually on one side and will be need to be filled in later. Actually these book supports are optional. I added them in because I wanted to have support on the sides and that way I don't have to necessarily need bookends. Then I added the other long leg to complete the frame. The 1x2 boards were easy to attach, but the 2x2s were a different story. The space was pretty tight and I wasn't able to fit in my drill with the long pocket screwdriver bit in there. So I tried the short driver bit, but with no luck. And then I realized that it was time to pull out my right angle drill bit adapter, which if you don't have one in your workshop, you definitely need to get it. It makes adding screws in tight spaces super easy. And that's it. That is the side frame. And of course, I built two of these. This is a great time to fill in all the pocket holes because they are very easily accessible right now. Now to build up the rest of the frame. I attached the long sides using wood glue and pocket hole screws, which is pretty straightforward. And I also used the spacer from earlier to make sure that all the spacings were exactly what they needed to be. Thank you. 
Once those were attached, I went ahead and attached the other side frame with pocket hole screws. But actually, I got ahead of myself because later I found out that the shelves wouldn't fit in there and that is something you don't get to see because my camera had run out of battery. So I actually ended up taking all of this apart. So instead, I just attached the top apron and then put the structure away and got ready to prepare the bookshelves. I measured and marked one and a half inches on two corners where the shelves would wrap around the legs and cut them out with a jigsaw. And then I went ahead and applied edge banding to finish up all the edges of the plywood shelves. I am using a Cricut Mini, which is basically a tiny iron, but you can use a regular iron for this too. Now the shelves fit in perfectly. Once they were in, I added wood glue and then attached them to the rails using finished nails. Then I brought in the other frame, which was nice and snug, and in fact, I had to tap it in with a mallet to make sure everything fit in perfectly. And then I went ahead and attached the long sides with the pocket hole screws to complete the entire frame of the bookshelf. For the top, it's basically another piece of plywood finished on all sides with edge banding. I aligned the back to the frame and added an overlay on the front and the sides and attached it using wood glue and finished nails. Now for the back. I decided to use vinyl trellis for the back, which I cut down using my compact circular saw and attached using staples. You could totally leave the back open or use a quarter inch sheet of plywood. I had this vinyl trellis left over from a planter that I had built a few years ago and I thought that it would add some really cool character to this shelf. Finally, I filled all the nail holes and used my paint sprayer to apply primer and paint. I am using an exterior grade gray primer which sticks to vinyl. I have used it on the planter three years ago and it has held up really well. And here it is all painted. This is a great easy weekend project and you can never have enough storage for books. Once again, you can find the plans for this on my website and a link to that is in the description below. If you are looking for more office related projects, I have built a desk last year, which you might also love, or you might like this project. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.